Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time? Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Grace, what are you doing here? Celebrate your birthday, obviously. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the Fan Carpet. How's everyone doing? Good, thank you. Good, thank good. you. You? You yeah, are good, thank you. All right, so um, fantastic film. Um, how's it, how's everyone doing today? Good, yeah. Good. Very yeah. well, thank you. Okay. All right. I'll, jump straight in. Um, so if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you guys to get into the entertainment industry? Um, if you're talking to me, I would say that all I, of you, you know, it's, it's, it's happened over time. Naturally, I think, Mark, you know, I started out as a young kid, like everyone watching movies, going to the theatre, fell in love with, you know, the arts world, entertainment, everything, singing, dancing, movies, musicals, theatre, Shakespeare, the whole lot. And, um, you know, it's been a long journey for me. Here I am now with uh, Mr. Ritter making movies. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, I'd say the same yeah. for me. It just happened very natural. I grew up always performing mainly dance um, based. And then I just sort of transitioned into acting and just got the bug for it. And I never stopped. Awesome. Yeah, again, same for me, just kind of performing and doing shows and creating stuff. And yeah, just found myself there. <laughs> uh, it's very unnatural for me. Um, <laughs> I started as a, a mark, marketeer and then got a job in London, decided I don't want to do nine to five anymore. So I, I wanted to try acting because I've already loved watching movies and, and build my confidence up slowly from that. And then, and then just start making my own films and just never stopped since then. So. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so what was it about help that made you want to create it and bring the story and characters to life? Um, for help, I think it, it mainly from my kind of personal life, life experience and how the society is like in terms of relationship between men and women and uh, what you don't get to see behind the doors. So I thought that's really interesting and to have that kind of setting in the way that not people would expect um, because there's always a common knowledge that man abuses women physically, mentally in relationships and and that's the case some, sometimes but not always the case and I wanted to show there's always the other side and that's what I've experienced in my previous relationship not to that certain extent, I'm still alive but uh, um, but there, there was similar, similar kind of situations uh, in my previous relationship. So I thought I'd be good to make that into into film. Um, yeah. Cool. And for you, uh, and for the rest of you. Uh, well, for, for me, Mark, um, I was just very excited to attempt a first feature film with Blake. We'd made uh, a few short films together. Uh, some were doing pretty well on YouTube. Um, so we thought we'd go for it. We started out with the idea of Blake's talking about, and you know, script did change a couple of times. Ultimately, for me, that was a goal. Let's make our first feature film, see how we do, learn from it, learn about, you know, obviously for Blake anyway, about writing screenplays and and um, and for me as as a as a producer, just um, how to build a team, how to keep everything together, how to deliver, um, and the whole process. I, I fell in love with it. Um, I, I, I did it with small films before that. 
short films and, and a few short sort of theater nights and plays and things so it was just uh yeah it was a real uh, fun experience for me so uh I'm happy with that. We just got the film distributed. And, you know, the fact that we're talking to people like yourself, to me, it's all still part of that journey. So, mm. um, yeah, I'm still loving it. And we we just wrapped The Manor, our second feature. So it's much the same thing. And everything I learned from Help, I put into that. And obviously, there's a lot I've learned from The Manor that, that'll go into the next thing. So, yeah, for me, it's just uh, consistency, you know, action and productivity over time, really. Sarah and Emily? Um, well, I had worked with Blake and Louis prior to help on a short film called A Simple Robbery. Um, that was the first time I worked with them and the experience was amazing and they're so fast paced. I've never experienced anything like it before actually. The film, we finished shooting and I think Blake had the film finished within two days. So I was impressed by that and I liked that it was so fast paced and I could see the end product straight away. So as soon as they mentioned that they were gonna shoot a feature film, that I knew I really wanted to be involved. So I just was on their case all the time, let me audition, let me audition, I wanna read for the part. And then they did finally let me audition and I got the part. And what what was it specifically about uh, about your character that drew you to her? Um, well, she actually has a lot of things that she's hiding, and I liked that her journey throughout the film, she gets to show show it all. It all comes out. You see mm. everything of Liv and everything that she has to offer. So I just liked the journey that she has within the film. Cool. And for you, Emily? Um, yeah, I got the audition through myself, pulled through my agent. I didn't know much about it apart from the script. And they said that there's a twist. And I remember thinking of all the different things that it could be. Um, so I could have something in mind when I did the audition. And when I did the recall, and then when I found out what it actually was, I was like, oh, wow, that's not I like I didn't have that in mind at all and it was really interesting and I was just excited to see how it played out and to get to read the script and yeah I think it's kind of the same as Sarah where it's just so many different secrets and things that you're hiding and kind of seeing how much you can let go and yeah I just found that really interesting. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, do you have any memories for filming that you'll remember for the rest of your careers? Of course, of course, Mark. There's there's several for me, you know, and and I think um, and, I, and what I like to see as well is that with um, a lot of the cast, a lot of the, well, the cast and crew members we we've worked with since, and what I like is that they formed memories and friendships, and that and it's nice now that you kind of created that world temporarily, but then you know people have moved forward and stayed friends and. And that, that's really important to me. So for me, I think the best memory was the first night, I always say this, where we sat down to dinner and you just get to see everybody's faces around the big table and you think, wow, this is, we, we brought this into existence. So to, you know, that will always stay with me. That, that's one of the big ones for me. Um, for me, I think it's, it's during maybe the second, third day of the shoot um, out, of, out of 10. So nearly halfway. And then I start to realize, wow, this is, this is exciting and this is this is what I definitely want to do because I never had an experience of what shooting the feature would be like. I thought it would be a similar feeling of, of shooting short films, but just a few more days on top. But now it's completely different and in a positive way. Uh, we did struggle, but yeah, the best memory is getting that feeling going, wow, yeah, I wanna I wanna do more. And this is this is just my passion and and I just want to carry on doing more feature films, which we have done. So awesome. <clears throat> have you ladies? Um oh gosh. Uh just the whole experience was so good. Everything, every day, waking up where we were staying, where we were filming, that was really, really nice. And we just had a really good family feel from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. It was just such a pleasure 
to be on the set and obviously Emily and I had some like nice moments I think one night we saw some shooting stars didn't we oh, that was yeah. really fun yeah and we we played some pranks on Louis as well one evening <laughs> hiding from him <laughs> so we just had a good laugh just it was it, the whole experience was great yeah I was gonna say I think it was after we finished shooting and people started to go home and we were watching I don't know whether we were watching scary things or we were talking about scary things and then Louis was like oh I need to go into the other house and we were like okay fine <laughs> and he started like banging on windows and mm. running around the whole house and we, were <laughs> out and we were we were pretending like we weren't scared we were actually terrified we were yeah, yeah we were <laughs> he was just getting us back for that night we pranked him we hid from him <laughs> awesome um now uh Blake um obviously these three um uh, uh, the, cent the three central performances of these three is just fantastic. Um, what was it about these three that made them the perfect person for the roles? Um, similar to what they've said, really. Um, for, for Louis, I've worked with him before, so I can see he's improving in terms of short films, film on film, in terms of his acting skills and, and producing skills. And um, so I thought this, this is his big chance to, to make a lead role in the future. Uh, he's never done it before. I know that's one of his dreams. So, so I gave that to him and uh, I'd never regret it. And, and Sarah, like she said, we worked on Simple Robbery. She's just so good and she's really hardworking. Um, and I knew she'd be dedicated whatever role I give her. Um, so, so it was just, yeah, in a heartbeat, I could have said, yeah, Sarah was definitely the one to work with and and uh with the audition of emily she would just like outperform everyone there was no doubt there wasn't even like mm, shall we pick her or shall we pick the other cast member it was like yeah um so that was an easy choice for emily as well yeah cool um and how how did you three work on the chemistry because obviously that's needed for a, for roles like that for a film like this I think it all just came naturally. We really clicked and just got along so well from the get-go. Yeah, I think even from the audition, like the recall, when I first met them both, it was just very easy and is they made the room really calm and fun. So instantly it was like a good working environment as well. So if we needed time to chill, we it was just so simple. Awesome. Anything to add, Louis? Not really. I mean, I could talk and talk, Mark, but um, <laughs> I think much like Emily said and Sarah, when we take into account just the, the location and, and everything else and the experience as a whole, I think all of us had time to bond with each other as well as the crew members, which, you know, makes a huge difference when you're working at such a fast pace and things are going wrong and you're rescheduling mm -hmm. and you just feel really comfortable and it is a friendly family kind of environment most of the time so that naturally brings you together so there's not much to do when it comes to to um the performance part were you one of luck one of the lucky uh, productions that were pre-covid or were you like in the midst of it we were yeah we were bang in the middle of it um ah. lucky enough it, it was kind of the time where it was kind of it was relaxing slightly in the, in the in the fact that we could we could work in bubbles and things, which is why we were able to go ahead. We were isolated in, in that house um, for like ten days, twelve days. Um, we had a few visitors from the outside that had to wear, you know, PPE, all that stuff, and test. And our production coordinator Jeffrey was fantastic with temperatures every day, and you know, everyone was being really sensible and good about it. So we were, we were very fortunate. In a, in a way, it was it was good for us. In a way, you know, it made us focus on what we could do with limited time, limited people and uh, limited locations. So we come, we come up with this, so very happy. Yeah, because the, 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 the location itself, the house itself kind of becomes a character in itself. Um, was that something that was important to you when finding the location? Um, yeah, I think Blake can answer that in a creative level for you. But for me, I'm always looking for somewhere that's gonna, you know, become like the girls were just saying you know it's all about that for me because that you know if you get an unhappy cast and crew if they're not sleeping right and there's not enough space to eat and hang out and have some downtime then it can turn a really good script 
into a disastrous production. Um, so for me, I'm always looking at, yeah, is it is there enough room to sleep? Is it just a look, does it look like a happy, fun place? Is the host nice that's letting us rent it? Um, all that kind of thing. And just is there space for kits and camera maneuvers, all the practical stuff um, for me anyway, and price, of course. Um, and Blake will now talk to you a bit more about the, the creative side, I suppose, of a location being a character, Blake. Yeah, the location is like a character, like Louis said, and it's it just as important as hiring Emily and Sarah and Louis. And um, when we found the location, which is amazing, and I don't know if you remember some of the aerial shots from the drone, it was really good as well. It just give you that isolated feeling for those three characters and the big space um, gives a kind of similar feeling as well. Um, we, we did have plans to shoot a scene where it happens on a balcony, but being the typical British weather, we couldn't do that. So we had to shoot it underneath the balcony. Uh, but yeah. yeah, otherwise it's really good. The night scenes were amazing as well. Uh, with all the surrounded by nature. So yeah. Awesome. Um, now help falls into the realm of the thriller. Um, what are your preferred genres and do you have any favorite films? Um, I I like to watch sci-fi and horror at the moment quite a bit and do dab into thriller when it, there's a good story and that makes you think. Um, favorite film, uh, Interstellar. Okay, nice. I also like watching sci-fi, but I do love a good rom-com or drama and my favorite film is Dirty Dancing. I don't think anything will ever change it. <laughs> it's my go-to. It makes me really happy. Excellent. Louis? I don't know. Yeah, Louis. No, go on, Emily. Go no. on. <laughs> I, I had so many films in my head. I'm going to go with Parasite. Yeah, that's, at the moment, I'd say that's my favourite. Did film. you? Yeah, that's probably why. That's probably why. But okay, so Parasite. And yeah, kind of like comedy, horror, this kind of new genre kind of get out, like it's not comedy horror, but there is a, there's elements to it that are kind that make you laugh. Because I can't just watch horror, otherwise I'll, I won't sleep for weeks, so. <laughs> uh, Mark, I'm gonna cheat and give you about four or five because I can never do the one it doesn't. So I'd say, you know, when I started out, I was training in the theatre. I loved all the old movies and the old actors, you know, that came out of the Method School at the time in the 50s with Marlon Brando, sat on the waterfront, all that kind of thing. And then mm -hmm. I also grew up with my dad, you know, watching like Kirk Douglas movies and Burt Langston and these old Hollywood epics, you know. And then uh, as I got a bit older in the 90s, we had, you know, I was watching Tom Cruise and, and people that in inspired me to kind of want to take action and, and inspire other people. And, and uh, so, yeah, you know, stuff like you know, Jerry Maguire, I'm not ashamed to say I love that movie. I love uh, I love Rocky, and I, you know, and often I find myself in acting circles where people are asking each other, "What do you like?" And you're always trying to give the deepest answer to show what an artist you are. But as I've gotten older, and as I've turned into more of a producer, I look at people like Sylvester Stallone and and the archetype of of Rocky of you know always moving forward and, and not mm. giving up no matter what life does to you or the world does to you. You know, it resonates with me more and more. So. I can rewatch those movies and see different elements I never saw as a younger man. So, um, yeah, and so right now I think my favourite film is uh, is Help by Blake Ridder. So, <laughs> <laughs> love. <laughs> Excellent. Right, are, th are there any other aspects of the industry that you'd like to pursue? Mm. Directing, I think. But Ooh. Smaller scale. I've done some theatre directing before. Um, yeah, and I'd like to see if I could do. I want to do musical theatre. Musical? No, what am I talking about? Music video directing. Very mm -hmm. Yeah. Will you cast me, Emily? <laughs> you have to audition. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'm, I'm already doing too much, so I don't, I don't think I want to. Do another. You do a bit of everything. I do, I do a bit of everything. I do <laughs> music editing, editing, DP, cinematography, acting, and yeah, I just. Uh, I think, but Blake, I think in all fairness, that is in the in the realm of film, right, and cinema. So I think the question is more, 
because I feel much like Blake, we're doing a lot at the minute, but I would like to, I have started to, I, I love dance and I'd love to do something more on stage where I can, you know, dance and perform, uh, you know, and in a mo more physically, I love physical stuff rather than just always, you know, acting and speaking and using my face to pull different mm. expressions. So uh, yeah, for me, a bit of dancing, I think Mark this year, I think that's what's going to happen as nice. well as making, as well as making movies. So yeah, I'm the same. I like dancing. I'd like to do a bit more dance. Um, incorporate that into a film or something. But I also like to write. So I have written a few of my own shorts that I would like to progress, possibly make some. Who knows? Excellent. Excellent. Um, now, obviously, fandoms are a big part of the industry. Who or what are you guys are a fan of? Anna. Mm -hmm. Oh, like a fanboy. What am I a fanboy of? Hmm. Uh, I, like all, I like all the Marvel films, I guess. Oh, yeah. 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 I guess I'm a Tom Cruise fanboy, if it's, if it's got to come down to it. I can't wait for Top Gun to come out. You know, I love all the Mission Impossibles. Um, yeah, otherwise, I spend most of my time on YouTube watching random videos on on diet and nutrition and fitness. I'm just down a rabbit hole for hours and hours, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a hard one. It is a tough one, isn't it? I think yeah. we're so, the three of us are so action oriented, yeah. four of us so action oriented that we're often always not consuming too much. We're doing all the time. Emily's always working, Sarah's always working, so is Blake, so am I. So you don't get much time to often kick back and think, what what am I into anymore? I think just Sarah's my biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yours, yeah. My fan girl over Blake Ridder. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. What were you gonna say, Emily? Nothing. Nothing, no? Nothing. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with Marvel. Marvel, I just watched the new uh, Spider-Man and I didn't get any spoilers up until this point and I watched it like a week ago. And Good. I'm proud of that. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it. I saw it twice in the same week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. The, the week it came out, I saw it twice, the two days back to back. So, yeah, I'm a big fan. So, Mark, on that note, obviously, you're a big, obviously, sci fi fan there, Marvel yep. fan. We, 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 we've started a series called C600. I'm not sure if oh. you've stumbled across it. Have you? No, not yet. Not yet. I'll have a look, yeah. I'll look out for the link. Is that on YouTube? Yeah, so in the Riddy universe, we're on episode three now, and it's growing in the views. It's into the millions. We're going to keep going with it. Uh, so, check it out, see what you think. It's kind of like a I don't know, Tony Stark meets Doctor Who um, kind of vibe, I guess. Nice. Check it out. See yeah, I'll check think. that out. It's on, it's on YouTube. Cool. I'll have a look at that. And then I'll put a link into it on the, um, on the video as well um, when I edit. Um, cool. So with the popularity of streaming services, what do you think the future of cinema is? I love cinema so much. Like going, I used to have a, an Odeon card. Um, I was like, mm, do I pay for my rent or do I buy an Odeon card? <laughs> and um, I just, I think there's nothing like just going into a room of people or sometimes by yourself because you're in the middle of the day because you have weird working hours and just watching, sitting down and spending all your time and all your attention watching something. Because I think with streaming, it's really easy to get distracted or to switch off or to think, oh, maybe I should have been watching that. So hopefully people will still want to sit down, spend time to really focus on what they're watching. So, yeah. That's... Yeah, I think I agree with Emily actually, because I'm really guilty of um, putting on Netflix and watching something, but I feel like I'm really unproductive. Like if I'm not, doing it something else like if I'm not doing work so I'll sit there watching a series but I'll also be working on the laptop at the same time so but it is nice to be able to just switch off and watch a film and just focus and obviously when you're in the cinema I can't take my laptop and work at the same time so we're forced to do that 
Yeah, I kind of agree, agree with Emily and um, with the cinema, kind of good atmosphere and and the sound, the the the, the bigger screen, you just can't beat that. And yeah. yeah, I mean, streaming is good in terms of convenience, um, but I think that that that's it really. Um, if I, yeah, if I have a choice, if, especially if it's a blockbuster film like sci-fi and um, you, you just got to watch on a bigger screen. Yeah, I think you're, in that regard, you're right. But I think that from my standpoint as a filmmaker with Blake, I think for us, it, the streaming world opens up a whole different possibility for us. We never could have got to in the old days, you know, to get a, a cinematic release. You know, you're talking millions of dollars, um, pounds. But Blake and I can just put movies up and see who likes them. You know, and we're hoping to do something next on the YouTube channel where we do something slightly longer that we can release. And it's a nice way of getting instant feedback. It's a nice way of attracting fans and investors for the bigger projects. You know, our goal is to get to that point where we can, you know, shoot something that gets released in the cinema, spend lots of money and time on it. But streaming the internet, let's just call it, is allowing us to get there, um, you know, with no film school background and no real big contact. So it, it has made a big difference. And I don't think we'd be here talking to you if we had to wait and go the old cinematic route like 50 years ago. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting how, how, how it's all changed. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Um, so what are you hoping fans and audiences will take away from, the, from help? For me. In the house. Oh. Never go back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Run away. Um, that it's okay to kill a dog in the film. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot I'm, of worse I'm crimes than killing the dog. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm hoping people like you know are introduced to, to, to our faces and say, hey, you know, they they see Emily's work, see Sarah, see Blake, notice our names as producer filmmakers and, and actors and and think you know I take my hat off to them that they, they gave it a shot during that time limited time limited budget all that kind of thing I'm interested to see what they've got coming next I think that's the most important thing to, you know for me they can find what they want from help from watching it and just always appreciate you know this is our first film um, and for lots of us I think leading up characters that you know carry an arc for that long in a film as well so as long as people look at it from that standpoint and say, okay, you know, interesting. What are they doing next? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with Livy on that. Awesome. Um, and what does the future hold for help? Early days at the moment, Mark. So, we've, you know, we only came out, I think, last week um, on all the platforms. So we're getting feedback from the distributor who we're working with, 1091. Um, it's been great for us just to talk to people like yourself and work with a PR company. And um, so, yeah, we're not sure. It's early days. We're looking at the numbers and where, where it's getting streamed and viewed and what territories. And, and I think it's been invaluable for Blake to get lots of feedback on his, on his craft. You know, like I said, didn't go to film school, didn't have a professor helping him or peers or anything. So the pair of us, and luckily enough, Blake's got thick skin. So we can take all the harsh stuff as well as the nicest stuff. And it's, it's still learning for us. So, Hopefully in six months, you know, it'd be nice if at least a couple of thousand or tens of thousands of people have watched it around the world. And uh, yeah, we can we can move on from there. Awesome. Okay, um, so what are you working on at the moment that you can talk about without getting into trouble? Uh, Sarah, I know that you're in you're in which uh, with my friend uh, Mark Zamet. Oh, you know, Mark. Yeah, I do. Oh, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. So Mark and Craig, actually, I'm with Craig, he's in the other room, we're filming something today, and also with a fellow cast member, Anto. So I'm filming something with them, but yeah, which was amazing. I mean, it was unreal getting to film in Budapest and being on a huge set. It was such an amazing experience and I loved it. And I loved the character that I play and, I can't wait for everyone to see it. It's just so exciting. We've been talking about it today, Craig and I. But yeah, it was awesome. And Mark's great. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, you guys? We um we we're working on we used to do one short films per month on my YouTube channel. So uh, thanks thanks to the Patreon members, we're now able to do two fit short films per month. So we're about to release a second one for this month called My House, and obviously the manor is in background to be edited, and the other two films next month, and so on. So yeah, Mark, have you seen the trailer for the manor? Not yet. Oh, you should check it out. So that's we just, we just we just shot that, wrapped that a few weeks ago. We're in post production now. We've actually got a campaign that's still live for some post production costing. Uh, so it'd be great if you could check it out and let us know what you think about that. Um, yeah, Emily. Awesome. Emily's always got lots going on, but she's <laughs> she's like a spy. She she you know can't get out. <laughs> no, um, just yeah, some things hopefully coming out this year, but I don't know because they don't tell me anything. Um, so that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, okay, where can, we all find, where can we find you and uh, help online to keep up with everything you're doing? Um. So Ridder Films in general, we've got the, uh, you know, the Instagram, the social. So I'm Louis James 24. Blake Scott is Blake Ridder. Um, and we got Ridder Films. So, yes, yeah, the YouTube channel is called Ridder Film, uh, Blake Ridder too. So if you look up Blake Ridder, Ridder Films, or you'll find everything. But, you know, if you're on TikTok, the TikTok's exploding because we've got all the behind the scenes merged with, the, you know, the split screen stuff. So which is really cool. You can see some, uh, all that business. I've got Otherwise, a podcast. Uh, called the Ritter Universe, uh, feature <laughs> yeah. all the different guests, like like these people here, even you, Mark, if you want to join me on my podcast, um, and we'll talk about different things and filmmaking, acting, yeah, as well. You, Emily? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Instagram, I guess. Uh, it's Emily Rita Redpar, so my name. That's it. Cool. And Sarah? What was the question? Uh, where can we find you online? <laughs> oh. To keep up with everything you're doing. <laughs> yeah, Instagram is the easiest way. It's um, Sarah A. Marks. Awesome. That's where I post most, most of my stuff. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's a funny that. question, isn't it, Mark? Because you know, this day and age, obviously, in the old days, we've all got our professional, you know, spotlight links, agents, all that kind of thing. But Instagram seems, you know, because of the internet, it's like the go-to. People just go to it. They get a kind of like a snapshot of your life. You know, not yeah. that they should always be together, but you do get an idea of personality and what's going on, and especially with Blake and I. But, you know, everyone treats their pages differently. So, but for Blake and I, that's where really it's all going on. Uh, our whole fake happy life is there. Mm. Not fake. What do you I'm mean? I'm joking. Of course it's not fake. I'm just kidding. It's, it's all good. It's edited. It's edited. What you're allowed to say about the manor, um, because obviously you just finished that, but what what can you what are you allowed to say about it? Um it's gonna be amazing. So yeah, it's good. good. Um well it's in the trailer anyway, so it's it, it's the manner where people go and um thinking there's something that's valuable, so they try to steal, but instead they get stuck in a time loop. Um and then we just watch and see how they kind of get out of it, really. That's that's the gist of it. Um, but there's there's a lot of twists as usual. Um, a lot more than help. Um, some very interesting death scenes, and I'm excited to show everyone. And uh, lots of foreshadowing details that people may pick up on the second and third time viewing as well. So yeah, there's lots of lots of exciting stuff coming out of the manor. Yeah, once again, we've got a stunning location. I think people just feast their eyes on that place, you know, in terms mm. of a character in itself. And also, like Blake says, it's not your stereotypical horror film. Yes, we've got the jump scares that will, you know, please all the fans and all that kind of thing. And there's a bit of gore, quite a bit of gore here and there. But um, yeah, there's another element to it with this introduction of time loops. And, you know, it's, there's been a few films recently with that stuff kind of being incorporated. But, you know, Blake does it in his own unique way, as always. So lots to enjoy in that film you know i know helps a bit of a slow burn and it all comes at the end everything's hidden then it all comes at the end whereas this one from the get-go you've, you've got enough to kind of be yeah. you know feasting mm. on visually awesome 
Okay, well, I look forward to all of that. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been wonderful. Um, in, uh, enjoy the rest of your days and good luck with all your shooting. Take care. Thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care, Bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. Lied and manipulated me. I need you to tell me the truth. What did you see? largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.